Right, so this is a demonstration how to replace this old wheel bearing with this shiny new wheel bearing here. Um, with no special tools or anything, um, it's not dangerous to do it this method at all. If anything, it's quicker and easier than having to take it somewhere and use a hydraulic press. So, there's nothing actually wrong with this wheel bearing. The other one on the other side of the van is knackered, but I always change them as a pair. So, if you don't know how to take these apart and get to this stage, I've got another YouTube video as well, which shows you how to change discs and pads and you have to get it to this stage to remove the discs. So, start by removing the brake disc. So that's these five bolts here. These are a 13 mil. I've already cracked these off with the air gun uh, before I took it apart. So they should come out nice and easily, he says. Okay, so now that you've removed those five bolts, Take the last one out here. The next step is just to hit the disc down. As you can see, I've already given it a few taps here, just to loosen it up. These can be quite hard, and it might be worth just sticking it on the floor, but that's essentially all it is, just working your way around. Then you just want to get that in the right orientation, and then that lifts out. This disc can go in the bin, because we've got a new one. Bear in mind, if you're not replacing the brake discs, Use a bit of wood and a copper hide hammer just to save it. You don't want to go denting them. So this is the part that we need to replace, which is this bearing here. It's the whole piece, as you can see. I'll be honest with you, if you got this far, you've probably done the hardest part of the job. So the next part, I'm going to put it on a time lapse, is a lot of destruction, really. So I like to pull out this um, rubber dust seal here and then pull out part of the bearing race and then use an angle grinder and I cut right across here and across here and then I pull that off and then I work at the collar on the inside. So I'll put it on the time lapse because this might take me 20 minutes or it might take me 10 minutes. I'm not sure, I can't remember how long this, these, den, these tend to take. So we'll just see how we go. Okay, so now we've removed the outer part of the bearing case, as you can see here. Took a few little cuts and uh, just got all the bearings out of it um, and the cage. As soon as that's off, you're left with what is known as the inner part of the bearing. Uh, inner race, whatever you want to call it, everyone's got different names for it. So you can see how thick it is. You know, it's about that thick. What you want to do is you need to remove this and it's in two parts. You've got an outer one, you can see it's separated just there. And you've got an inner one again so there's that section there and that section there now you can put these on a press get sort of or you can use a puller or something like that the easiest method i've done is i use an angle grinder with a nice new cutting disc and i cut across like this and across like this um, in a cross pattern now be really careful not to nick the inside part of it here if you do it's not the end of the world um, but try and avoid that if you can so cut across cut across and then i hit it a few times with a hammer and because this is toughened it should just crack and then you pull it straight off so i'll put this on a time lapse again and i'll try and stop before i take it off and you can see what i've done now as you can see this was a success so this was the outer one that I've already removed and as you can see I cut across it and I hit it hard enough and I don't know if you can just about make that out but it's fractured and it popped off same with this one here got this to a point where it was 90% of the way there I've just reinstalled this just so you can see how it comes off and there you go you can see I didn't cut all the way through and that's where it's fractured there on the lip just slide it off like so as I say it's, I've done quite a few of them, but a lot of the time you might leave a tiny
tiny bit of a kiss mark from an angle grinder if you do get a little bit zealous with it. The best thing to do is to keep working your way through it slowly, slowly, slowly. Um, give it a couple of love taps with a hammer and a chisel and see if it will just crack. Because sometimes, I mean, these do just crack with a good old whack. But be careful not to damage this. But if you do get a little bit of a score on it, it's not, it's not the end of the world. It's, uh, you know, it's not going to finish the bearing off by any means. The, the part that you don't want to damage really is... Um, is the face of the bearing when you're putting it on you want to make sure it goes on straight so now that's done what i like to do is i like to clean the back of the hub up because it's a good opportunity to do it now if you need to replace any studs again you can do that now so we'll give this a little clean up have a little tidy up and then we'll get ready to put the new bearing on right so now the surface is all cleaned up this is the most important part of the whole ordeal and this is installing the new bearing now step one you want to make sure that you get it on the right way short side faces out because this is the bit that goes through the uh, knuckle of the van so you need your bearing you need the stub axle the nut and a washer a piece of wood and let me go into my toolbox a decent sized hammer i use a copper hide because it just doesn't damage anything so what we're essentially going to do is we're going to install this stub through the hub. We're going to use that by doing the nut up to pull this onto the new bearing. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. Now you can't start off using the stub axle to pull it on because this has to go on a certain distance first. Now, that's the most tricky part. So I like to use some anti seize, a bit of copper slip. Excuse my hands, I haven't got any gloves at the moment. So give it a good wipe round like so make sure it's got a good coating on it it's also good because it stops any corrosion building up in areas you might not be able to get to which might lead to premature bearing failure so make sure it's on the right way this side faces out hope you can see that because i can't see the camera from where i am so get it on where you think it should be make sure it's going on completely straight i use this is just to start it and then little taps just to tap the bearing in. All right. Okay. And this is eventually going to go through there, like so. And once you can start getting a thread on it, you're pretty much good to go. So, be careful, you do not want to hit the teeth on this. This is your ABS ring, okay? time double check everything's going on completely straight now this one's already going on at a bit of an angle so it's a bit high on this side so a little bit high there we go straight as a die there we go we're starting to make some progress now what we're looking for here is, I don't know if you can see in here, but as soon as the thread comes through here, we can put the nut on and we can use a bar and a socket, or in my case, a lovely air gun here to wind it and pull the bearing on. So at this point, we still need to keep going until it's far enough on that we can use the impact gun. Camera go anywhere. There you. Still going on straight. Lovely. some progress what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it on a time lapse and hopefully you'll slowly see this just working its way back on there and then we'll come back at the end
Okay, so five minutes later, we're at a point now where the threads are enough through there that we can get the nut on. Don't need to put the washer on at this point. I mean, it's a very thick washer, as you can see, so that's gonna hinder us a little bit. So just to recap what we've done is we've got the stub axle like there going through. The bearing has started going on. It's on enough that we can now get a couple of threads wound on there like so. Use the whatever tool you're gonna to use. In this case, we use this. There's no reason you can't put this in a vise and use a, a brake bar. Cover your ears. What I like to do is I like to just keep checking it's going on completely straight, which it is. It's going on fine. Back it out a little bit. Might be able to get the washer on, not sure. No, no washer yet. Don't rush at this. This is the bit where everyone screws up when they do these jobs. When they rush it, there's no point in rushing. It will take as long as it takes. But don't be tempted just to go at it. Just keep checking, make sure it's all seating fine. You can always use the copper hide and tap on this surface here. Until you're happy, there you go. You can see it's starting to work. Try doing it up, Oliver. Be a good, good start, isn't it? Go. Right, we're on pretty much nearly, I'd say, halfway third of the way there. So we're at a point now where we can just give it big guns if you want to. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll put it so you can see it going on. Whoa. Hopefully you can see that there. There we There we have it. The bench there, swing them a look. So there we go. New one all installed. They are always stiff at the beginning. They loosen up after they're used because they're obviously they're brand new. But there we go. So that is how you do it. If you don't have a press, and I have done probably 30 of these. I've never ever had a problem with any of them. Um, it's a really, really good, and I'll be honest with you, this is a bit rubbish, this thing. Uh, compressor out there is probably 60 years old and it's knackered so it's got no puff to it. I usually use my snap-on impact gun um, and that thing whizzes on within about 30 seconds. You literally watch it slide all the way up. But there you go, so that's how you do it guys. Um, and obviously it's now just installed the new disc, bolt it back onto the car and off we go. Um, hopefully this helps. If anyone's got any questions about doing this, please just uh, drop a comment. I know quite a fair bit about these Mark 7 Transit so I'm always happy to help. But thanks for watching.